use. Video cards have been long determined by its size. So usually the bigger the card, the better the card. And I know this is really hard to see because it's a black EVGA T GTX 650 Ti with the two gigabyte version. They don't really sell these anymore. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon or anything, but they've been replaced by the seven, um, the 750 Ti. They both have two gigabytes of uh, DDR5 RAM, and they really have a lot of CUDA cores. Let me look and see what the CUDA core count on this one is. This one has 768 CUDA cores. Now these are single little soldiers working all at the same time, uh, doing a different job and all of them doing it very efficiently with DDR5 128 um, bit memory it's kind of like a four lane it's not an 18 it's not an eight lane or a six lane highway and it will do a max resolution of 2560 by 1600 now the great thing about this is you can actually run three uh, monitors all at the same time on this card but something else that is really awesome with this card is that it's small. And that's what we care about in small form factors is the smaller the better. Because where you save space in one place gives you more space somewhere else to add some wires or another part or something like that, even water cooling. So you really, really, really want to think about the size of all of your products when you're dealing with small form factors. Now, the AMD cousin of this is the Radeon R7 250, and it has 384 screaming processors. I call it screaming, but it's actually streaming. Now, the way AMD works is their streaming processors are kind of like fire teams, like SEAL Team 6 or something like that. They have these teams that get together and they work hard to do a mission, and then when they finish the mission, they do another one. Whereas the uh, CUDA cores are more like an army of one, like a single guy going in for an infiltration or one guy in a company doing one thing and another million other guys doing the same uh, or the same thing and then they're all turning it in whenever they finish and some of them can even get tired and quit working for a while and other ones will take over so actually the more streaming processors you have and the more data rate that you have which is the speed that it can work going back and forth is important now this data rate is 128 bit and also the um, the R7 250 has the same thing this got GDDR5 and the uh, DDR3 in the AMD series that doesn't mean that AMD is slower actually I think the AMD comes in about the same level so what you what you really find out is how big is it which the amd card is the smallest of all three that i'm talking about today with 5.7 inches of length this one actually has six inches of length and the 770 has a little higher a little bit bigger but i think the two gigabyte is actually smaller than the one gigabyte version and it's at six inches as well. They're all pretty well 4.3 and, and the Radeon is 3.7 inches tall. Um, and that makes a difference. Uh, another thing is different is the Radeon only has one uh, PCI slot that you have to worry about. Even though it takes up the room of two, it's still has only one slot um, 
to tell you the truth, it just it just depends on whether you're an AMD man or a uh, or a uh, Nvidia man. But what's important is the size. With us, with with SFF Tech, what we want to do is we want to emphasize these smaller cards that are game worthy. You can game with these, and you can game really well with them. Now they're not a top card like a 770 or 780 Ti, or like a, um, a 7990. Of course they're not. Most of those are, are priced so high now because of uh, all the bit, Bitcoining and all this other stuff that's going on. These are really great still with price. They're really great for gaming, and they're awesome for small form factor PCs. This is Derek Smith with an overview of graphics cards for your small form factor PCs. SFF Tech Reviews signing off and telling you happy modding.